Hi everybody, this video series will be about how to animate a solar system in Maya. This first video we're going to talk about setting up the scene, uh, how I modeled and positioned uh, all of my objects so that way we can go ahead and start animating and we will talk about how to import textures as well. So a couple things I have before I started uh, is I went ahead and gone on to Google and Google searched uh, some planet textures and star textures uh, ones that will be helpful for me for this project so when you go to Google um, if you search for like earth texture there will be uh, a lot of opportunities but one thing you want to look for with these textures is that the top and the bottom uh, are not necessarily skewed, but have the uh, texture map uh, so that, or the image is adjusted so that way it'll wrap around a spherical shape. So if you look at textures that uh, you can find for the earth or like let's do moon, you should see that the image that it produces, let's go to open image in new view, uh, is going to be kind of skewed at the top and the bottom. We want a tileable texture. Uh, so you could also search for uh, moon tileable texture and find ones uh, that'll work. Some of them are gonna be square like this, uh, but the ones we actually do want uh, look skewed on the top and bottom and are gonna be rectangular in shape. So this one is a 1024 by 512 image. So we want a texture map for every planet and from my point of view we have nine planets uh, that's including Pluto so uh, let's start from the beginning we have Mercury uh, we have Venus okay so each one of these is gonna have a texture map that is rectangular but skewed at the top and the bottom Mercury Venus uh, we have Earth and I also have Earth Clouds texture, so I'll come back and I'll show you how we can uh, make a more complex material and texture for this. Uh, along with Earth, we're going to have a moon texture as well. Uh, Mars comes after that, so there's a Mars texture. The Jupiter, so that's a Jupiter texture uh, with the big sunspot or um, cloud storm spot uh, we have a Saturn texture along with Saturn uh, Saturn has rings so this is a black and white rings texture um, and I'll show you how to use this uh, so Saturn rings texture if you find them on Google we want one that has a circular shape to it um, so I found one that is just a black and white image the one something like this right there without the red lines on there uh, so that way in Maya we're going to use this as a, an opacity map as well so the background will be transparent the white areas will be opaque so we do want a circular rings texture we don't want one uh, that is like this uh, or uh, a straight line we want a circular rings texture preferably one that has a black background with white rings on there Okay, um, let's go back on textures. Uh, let's see, Uranus is the next one. So Uranus, uh, we don't have a lot of really good reference images for Uranus textures, but this is a good example, a bluish greenish color. I have a Neptune texture, same thing with Neptune, more of a bluish purplish color. And then Pluto, so Pluto. We have some pretty good images of Pluto that you can find online as well. Uh, some of the textures that I have, I have a sun texture that's also set up for a spherical 3D model. I have a sun's rays texture. I'm not sure if I actually use that, but uh, we can do some interesting stuff with rays as well. And then I have an asteroid, if I can find it. Sorry, I cycled too much asteroid texture. So before we start this project, you need to download a good quality image of each one of the planets, the nine planets, an asteroid, the moon, uh, Saturn's rings, and a sun texture. Make sure you have a good quality image, so it needs to at least be 1024 by 512, I would say. 
um, in pixel resolution. Otherwise, it's going to be uh, very pixelated. Uh, you can also get a stars texture as well uh, from Google. Also, we'll use an image like this as well. All right, so go ahead and create a folder. My folder is going to be called Maya Solar System. Uh, and in that folder, I'm going to put, let's see, let me just cut these. In that texture, or in that folder, I'm just going to put those texture maps in there. So this way I don't have any subfolders. So my Maya project folder, my texture maps are in this folder, and then that's the same place my Maya file is going to be. So go ahead and download texture images. It's going to be a good starting point. Okay, in Maya, I'm going to briefly talk about how I set the scene up. Uh, these are just simple spheres, and what uh, you should do for a basic solar system animation is to uh, have relative scale. We don't want to create an animation that is one-to-one -one scale in size and distance away. We still want to be able to see all the planets moving and rotating around. Um, so this is a relative scale. So as in the sun's still the biggest thing in my scene um, as far as planetary size. And then uh, Mercury is smaller than Venus, Venus is smaller than Earth, and so forth. Um, so relative scale and position. So these are just basic spheres. Okay, For this project, it doesn't matter if you have triangles or anything on there. Uh, we want to keep that because the texture maps are created so that they will wrap around spheres properly. So I have a sun, and that's going to be the center of my grid. That's 0, 0, 0, and translate and rotate for my grid. And then each planet, I've just duplicated my sun, scaled it out, and then, or moved it out, and then scaled it down. So uh, for Mercury, I duplicated my sun with Control D, moved it over, scaled it down, and positioned it where I wanted that to be. So each one of these planets is just moved out in the x-axis and this is a good starting point all the planets motion are going to start as default from this x-axis in a line so I have uh, my four closest planets to the Sun I have Mercury uh, Venus Earth and Mars I also have duplicated the Earth and scaled it down and called that Earth Moon further out are the remaining planets the remaining five planets so I have Jupiter which is the largest uh, Saturn and Saturn's rings. I'll come back and show you how I did Saturn's rings here in a second. Uh, Uranus, Neptune, and Pluto. So yes, do Pluto. All right, so Saturn's rings, um, all I did there is, let me just hide that for a second, is I created a uh, create polygon primitives pipe. So if I look at this pipe, uh, it has a disk shape at the top put a hole in it. So what I did was I selected the faces at the bottom. Let me turn off soft select. So I selected all the faces at the bottom and deleted those. So that the only thing that I see is just that top of that pipe, which is like a disc shape, a CD like this. Um, I'm going to select the object in object mode, go to modify and center pivot. It so moves the pivot to the center of the uh, disk and then I'm going to use my um, snap to grid with the X button and I'll make sure my Saturn snaps to a particular grid point grid point 55 and then I'm going to snap my uh, disk to the same position so hold down X and snap until it goes down there so um, so that way I know that this disk is at the center of my planet. So then what you can do with the edge tool is select that and scale them in and out according to how thick you want these rings to be. Um, I'm going to unhide that. Shift H unhides an object. There you go. The other thing I'm doing with this is to make sure it renders from both sides um, and that is turning on two-sided lighting underneath lighting. So if you have two-sided lighting turned off, the bottom side of it is going to be black. So with lighting, two-sided lighting turned on, you see both sides of that plane. The key thing there is to make sure the Saturn's rings is centered on the Saturn geometry. OK, 
Okay, a couple of things I need. I need a uh, spaceship. You can build a spaceship however you want to. I just created a spaceship with some simple spheres and cylindrical pieces. And these are individual objects that I then selected all of these pieces. And in the modeling toolkit, hit the combine tool. So that makes one object from them. If you combine multiple objects together, you'll need to make sure you go to edit, delete by type history. So that way we don't have the history or extra nodes in the outliner. What is really important animation wise is that there's no history on our objects that can cause issues as it's animating. I've also modeled this so that way I can tell this part is the front of the spaceship. Uh, I have the needle going backwards and my legs also associated with the front of this vehicle as well. So we're gonna need some kind of spaceship. Uh, we're also gonna need some kind of asteroid. What I did here is I took a sphere and then added a deformer to this. So let me show you quickly how I did that. So I just took a regular sphere, I scaled it up a little bit, and I wanted to create some variation so it looked like a, a rock or an asteroid that isn't so perfect. And how I did that was I uh, took a sphere, went to the deform dropdown, and added a texture deform. There's a bunch of other deformers, but the texture deform gives the options. So select this object and go to the attribute editor. And in the tabs, there's a texture deformer tab. This gives me the option to add an image or a texture that deforms the geometry. So from the texture deformer tab of this object now, I'm gonna click the checker box beside texture. This pulls up a create render node, and I'm gonna choose noise. Noise creates randomized uh, value changes that pushes and pulls the geometry up and down. So when I click on noise, that will deform the geometry. So you can see it's randomly deforming it. But it's not really doing exactly how I want to. So I'm gonna select my object and go back to that texture deformer. And I wanna change the direction to normal and then lower the strength. There we go, that looks pretty good. So direction to normal, lower the strength, you can increase or decrease the strength. And that randomizes that uh, distortion, making it look like a rock or an asteroid. One final thing to do is that there is a texture deformer handle, which is part of this object's history. So just like we would do for the uh, Saturn's rings or the uh, spaceship, we need to make sure we select this object and do edit delete by type history that removes that connection of this object to that deformer, and we're ready to animate this object. I've already done that with this asteroid. The other thing I did, I just rotated it 90 degrees here. All right, the last thing I have created is a stars object, so I'm gonna unhide that. And this is just a really large sphere, so I took the same sphere that my son was created from, and then just scaled it up really large. And I'm gonna add a stars texture to that, uh, uh, in the next video. All right, so that's the modeling to set up uh, this project. The next video, we'll come back and talk about how to add textures and then get into animation.